Learning Objective 6-4, prepare equity method journal entries and consolidation entries for the consolidation of a subsidiary, subsidiary following upstream inventory transfer. So previously we did downstream and now we're going to do upstream. What upstream means is that the subsidiary is selling to the parent. Previously we saw that the parent was selling to the subsidiary. And in this scenario, the sale is from the subsidiary to the parent. And if there's a non-controlling interest, if there's no non-controlling interest, then it's almost the same. But if there is a non-controlling interest, that would mean that the part of the gross profit earned by the subsidiary, the selling party, part of that belongs to the non-controlling interest. And therefore, the adjustment for unrealized gross profit, the unrealized gross profit that needs to be deferred, that we would defer the entire thing on the books of the subsidiary. But on the books of the parent, we would only accept the portion of it that belongs to the parent. So when an upstream sale occurs and the parent resells the inventory to a non-affiliate during the same period, then everything is very clean and the elimination entries are the same as in a downstream sale. But if the inventory is not resold, then the elimination entries are going to be different in that they're going to be a portion between the parent and the non-controlling interest. So let's go through an example. First of all, the journal entries. Here, special buys inventory costing $7,000 and then sells the inventory to Peerless for $10,000. So that's the reverse that we had before. And Peerless sells to the non-affiliate for $15,000. Special Foods net income for that period is $50,000 and Special Foods dividend was $30,000. So when Special Foods purchased the inventory, Special Foods would per debit inventory for $7,000 and credit cash for $7,000. Special Foods will then, to record the sale, debit cash for $10,000 and credit sales for $10,000 and also record the cost of goods sold by debiting cost of goods sold for $7,000 and crediting inventory for $7,000. Peerless is going to purchase the inventory. So Peerless will debit inventory. I always like this because I feel like Peerless is getting it. We're getting back at Peerless now. Um, debit inventory for $10,000 and credit sales for $10,000. And now Peerless is going to record their share. So here, the net in, special net income of $50,000. So Peerless would debit investment in special foods. Same old journal entry, 50000 times 0.8 credit income from special foods 40,000 and then the dividend debit cash for 30,000 times 80% or $24,000 credit um, investment in special foods for $24,000 and then last but not least we have this unrealized gain and here it's a $10,000 gain on the part of Special Foods, but Peerless only owns 80% of it. So intercompany sales price is $10,000. And the cost of goods sold was seven. So the total deferred gross profit or unrealized gross profit is 10 minus 7 or $3,000. But that's for the whole gross profit. 20% of that belongs to the non-controlling interest. So the parent share 
exactly what's going on with me. Parent share is going to be 3,000 times 80%. or 2400 so using the fully adjusted equity method the peerless is going to defer twenty four hundred dollars in income and this makes sense because the sub is the one that's recording the excess income And again, we have this weird worksheet. What I did in the template, if you're using the template, is I put all the formulas in here to try to keep things, at least that part of it I can keep simple. But um, unfortunately, the book's not so consistent here. I'm going to debit income from special foods for $37,600. i am going to debit consolidated net income. This would be, this 37,600 is the 40,000 minus 2,400. Here with the non-controlling interest, you're going to do 50,000 times 20% minus the non-controlling interest deferral. And this just makes sense. I know it seems kind of weird how they're doing it here, but this just makes sense because what's happening here is that it's 50,000 times 20% minus the $600 that the non-controlling interest doesn't get. And the book shows you, it's page 259, shows you a full breakdown of how you do this if you want to do another schedule to back it up. But the easiest thing to do is just go 50,000 minus 600. I'm going to debit beginning retained earnings minus 600 or whatever the non-controlling interest share of that deferred gain is going to be. And I'm going to debit common stock at 200,000 and then I'm going to credit the investment account here we're doing this method so just for its full balance if you had write-ups or write-downs honestly between you and me you'd have a really hard time here you'd have to do a lot of backup schedules the book sort of gives you some idea on how to do that um, don't worry I'm not going to fire that problem at you sixty three thousand four hundred and you can do a roll forward it's shown to you again on page 259 about how the non-controlling interest share would get to be up to sixty three thousand four hundred dollars and then the additional entries here you're going to have a um the accumulated depreciation entry And you have to defer the gross profit, which is the most important part. So you need to take $10,000 out of your sales. You need to take $7,000 um, out of gross profit, out of cost of goods sold, rather. And the $3,000 here is going to go to inventory because the inventory is written up on the books of the sub, or rather on the books of the parent where it should not be written up. Let me just mark this in yellow so you can see it all in one piece. And then add everything up. And again, here you can see net income to parent is on Peerless's book is equal to consolidated, retained earnings is equal, assets equals liabilities, debits equal credits. Now Peerless sells to a non-affiliate for $15,000. Special Foods net income is $75,000 in year two. Fix this. And Special Foods dividend is $40,000. So. And we're grateful here because they didn't do that other thing they did in the downstream sale. In the downstream sale, remember, the parent again stole to the sub, and then the sub sold some of the merchandise, but not all of it. And they didn't do that for the upstream sale. This could happen with upstream also, and then you would need to apply that. But I, I think that goes a little further than we want to go in the chapter, and um, the chapter doesn't cover it, rather. And um, if you ever do this in the real world, then you'll have the good fortune of learning how to do that.
So we make the sale for $15,000 on January 2nd, and I'm also gonna record the original cost of it. So that would be debit cost of goods sold. I find that a lot of students, when I go over these cost of goods sold entries, perpetual inventory, don't remember them from intermediate or from financial reporting. So it's always good to go over it. By the end of this chapter, they know it really well. And then December 31st, our share of the net income is going to be to debit investment in special foods for 75,000 times 0.8 credit income from special foods. Then the dividend, debit cash, 40,000 times 80% credit um, investment in special food stock, $32,000. And now the last piece of this, I, I, they purely sold to the outside. So now peerless can recognize this income on behalf of special. If you remember, we deferred it here. And now that peerless sold to an outside party, I can record it. So all I have to do is I debit investment in special foods for the amount of the deferred gross profit, in this case, 2400 And then I credit income from special foods for 2400 Now remember, in the downstream sale, we did a little trick. And that trick was we recorded the realization of the deferred gross profit first before we did our big elimination entry. And that's out of order from the book, but that's an easier way to go about doing the big entry than how the book explains, because the book sort of changed gears on how they did this. And you might be like, well, how could the book do that? You know what? I worked in public accounting enough to know that people do stuff like this all the time where they slightly change how they do something and it throws everything off. And you got to sort of unravel that and figure out what they did. And so this is good practice for that. One day you'll see this in the real world. You'll be like, wow, Holtzman even showed me this. I mean, just the fact that things don't always, not everyone does everything the same way. So I'm going to recognize the gross profit here of 3000 wherever it is, by crediting cost of goods sold. Because what's happening is this, the parent is recording $10,000 in cost of goods sold, whereas it should only be, it should only be um, 7000 and then this is going to be split up 80-20. So 80% of this is going to be debited to the investment account. And 20% of this is going to be debited to non-controlling interest. Like so. And that'll be, we're going to do that first rather than second as our elimination entry. I think I did it in blue last time. Now we do our big elimination. And I'm going to debit income from special foods for 62.4. And again, I'm going to adjust net income to non controlling interest, multiply it by 0.2, and then add the 600 deferred. Last time I subtracted it. Now, because it had to be deferred, now it's going to be realized, and they're entitled to their share too. And the credit to investment in special food stock is going to be a plug here of 286,400. I just 284 plus 2,400. And then the difference between these, I hate, I really hate doing it this way. And if, if you're into it, you know, you can use the books method. It just, there's a lot more steps in there that I, I had, I'm hesitating to, oh, you know what I forgot to do is I forgot to put this in here that I'm hesitating to trouble you with. 
There we go. And I have my accumulated depreciation entry right there. And I'm just going to fix all my totals. And we can check our work by comparing net income to parents, a consolidated ending retained earnings, ending retained earnings. Total assets equals total liabilities plus stockholders' equity, debits equal credits. Make sure all the numbers look reasonable, and so on.